Australia or other parts of the world, we welcome you to join us as we celebrate the goodness and the faithfulness of our God through our worship this morning.
continue to worship you, God. We will continue to lift your name on high, God. Because you alone deserve the glory, God. Because you alone are worthy to be praised, Lord. Oh, Father, you are worthy this morning, God. Father, we lift your name.
why don't you raise your hands to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords in these next few seconds. Why don't you shout out to God with a voice of triumph. Shout out to God with a voice of praise. For He alone is worthy. We thank You, Lord Jesus. We thank You, Father. We invite You to come and have Your way, Lord God. For You are worthy to be praised. Come on, just a few more seconds. Shout out to God. Just a few more seconds. In your own words, give Him the glory. Give Him the praise. Father, we thank You. We thank You, Lord Jesus. Oh, come on, sing out your own song this morning. Father, You alone are worthy. You get all the glory. You get all the praise. And that is the reason why we worship You. This morning, we thank You, Lord God. We thank You, Father. Heavenly Father, we thank You for such a time as this. Father, in this moment, in this time, Lord God, we stand here and we declare that You are our portion. Father, for as long as we live, we will love You, Father. As long as we live, we will sing out to You, Lord God. Despite the circumstances that we may be going through, Father, we put that aside. We put away our problems. We put away our situation. And we put our focus on You today, Lord God. So we invite You to come and have Your way, Lord God. In this moment, Father, we specifically pray for our members, Lord God. We pray for those behind watching, Lord Jesus. We thank You, Father, for their safety, Father. We thank You for the provision, Lord God. May Your hand continue to be upon us wherever that we may go, Father. For the kids going to school, Lord Jesus. For those who are attending work, Lord God. May Your pillar of cloud be sheltering us, Lord God. And we thank You, Father, for the good health. Lord Jesus, we speak life. We speak prosperity. We speak good health, Lord Jesus. And we thank You, Lord God, for those who are watching that may be sick, Father. You are Jehovah Rapha. You are the Lord who heals, Father. And for anyone that may be sick, Lord Jesus, from the top of their head to the sole of their feet, Father, we pray for complete healing, Lord Jesus. We put our trust in You, Lord God. We thank You, Father, for those that may be suffering, Lord God, suffering in the darkness, Lord God, for mental health, anxiety, for depression. We come against it in the Name of Jesus. We stand here and we declare that You are the Lord, our God, who fights our battle. You are the Lord, our God, who will see us through, Lord God. And we stand on Your promises, Lord Jesus. We thank You, Father, for those who may be hurting in relationships, Lord God, those who may be hurting in their marriages. You are the Lord God who restores. And we believe, Lord God, that You will see us through, Lord God. And we thank You for this moment. We thank You for this time, Lord God. As we continue to praise You, as we continue to worship You, Lord God, let our worship be a sweet essence unto You, Father. From the rising of the sun, Lord God, to the going down of the same, it is Your name alone that shall be glorified. So we return to You all of the glory, all of the honour and all of the praise for it rightfully belongs to You. In You alone, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, Amen, Amen. Come on, wherever you were streaming in from, let's sing, Lord, I love You. Lord, I love you. 
morning, church. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you once again on our online service. And we do hope and trust you've enjoyed our service and our worship this morning. And wherever you're tuning in from, I would like on behalf of uh, the leadership of Mount Zion Christian Fellowship Center to take this opportunity to greet you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Even though we are locked down, even though we are confined, but it doesn't stop the way we worship Him because we are serving a God who is omnipresent. He is there. He is here. He is with us everywhere we go. I love the, what the psalm says. Where can I hide from your presence, O Lord? Surely He is ever-present. And the good news too, when He is present, nothing is impossible to Him. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're facing, whatever hardship, whatever mountain you're climbing, whatever darkness you're going through, but I'm here to tell you, your God is omnipresent God. He is forever powerful. He is mighty. He is the unstoppable God. Amen. I would like to... Uh, a special welcome to all our dear friends who are tuning in from overseas, um, apart from our church members in uh, Australia. Thank you for your faithfulness and your dedication. I do hope and trust with expectation and anticipation you're tuning in today. And I do pray some way, somehow, the Lord will bless you and minister to you in his divine way through the sharing of his word today. And uh, let's go straight into uh, the Bible reading that I want to share with you today. Before the Mother's Day, I've been trying to, to share from some of the character of the Bible, whereby we can learn from the experience of going through hard time and the test, the trials. And um, I share the first character that I share from was Elisa, and I hope you still remember before Mother's Day I was sharing that. And today I would like to share another character to us, and uh, I will continue on from few characters I've already prepared. And I do hope and trust that some way, somehow, you'll grab hold of some of the thought and may be the anchor and the tools of how you're going through this hard time that we are facing. Please turn with me to the book of Judges, chapter 16, verses 1 to 20. The book of Judges, chapter, uh, chapter 16, verses 1 to 21. One day Simpson went to Gaza where he saw a prostitute. He went to spend the night with her. And uh, verse 2, the people of Gaza were told, Samson is in town. Samson is here. So they surrounded the place where he lay and wait for him at night because Samson was a mighty warrior. Samson was... Uh, Someone they, they can't defeat is not only the judge to rule. No, he is a fighter. He is an appointed man of God at that point of time to conquer the Philistine. So this particular night, and that is what they did, they surround him. They tried to lock him down at the city gate. They made no move during the night saying, at dawn we'll kill him. But some way, somehow, Samson lay there only until midnight of the night. Then he got up and took hold of the doors of the city gate together with the two posts and tore them loose by and all. He lifted them to his shoulder and carried them to the very top of the hill that faced Hebron. And verse 4, sometime later, he fell in love with a woman in a valley 
of Zorak, whose name was Delilah. Now, the prostitute and Delilah was two different cases altogether. I will get into that when I'm sharing about the topic I would like to share with you. And uh, the rulers of the Philistine went to her and said, see if you can lure him into showing you the secret of his great power. Make sure, lure him, so we may tie him up and subdue him. Each one of us will give you 1,100 shekels of silver. So when this woman Delilah evaluate the man she loved and the shackle that was offered to him by the people that want to kill, said, hey, think about this. I do not know how people value their relationship. I do not know how people can trade in something special which is an earthly riches. May God help us, people. So Delilah said to Samson, tell me, baby, tell me. Tell me the secret of your great strength and how you can be tied up and subdued. Listen, it's not only Delilah. <laughs> the sad thing is about the man chosen by God. How can he be blinded? Hold on there, fasten your belt. I'm going to share to you some of the things that are felt in my heart that we need to equip and clothe ourselves. Samson answered her, if anyone ties me with seven fresh bowstrings that have not been tried, I'll become weak as any other man. So he knew straight away Delilah was trying to play games with him. So in turn, he played games again with Delilah. Then the rulers of the Philistine brought a seven fresh bowstring and had not been tried and she tied him with them. With men hidden in the room, she called to him, Samson, the Philistine are upon you. But he just snapped the bow, just like that. Easy as a piece of string snaps when it comes close to the flame. So the secret of the strength was not discovered. Listen to this. You think she stops there. Then Delilah said to Samson, you have made a fool of me. You lied to me. Come now, tell me how you can be tied. Now, listen to me, somebody. Listen to me. Watching by, by, by our live broadcast today. Listen to this. How many times for you to be fooled, for you to be tricked by the devil, and you still not waken up and realize that you need to make a move. May God help us here. He said, if anyone ties again, if anyone ties and secure with a new rope that have never been used, I'll become as weak as anyone. Man, anyone. So Delilah took new rope and it tied him with them. Then with men hidden in the room, she called her, called him, Samson, the Philistine upon you. But he snapped the rope of his arms as if they were threads, cotton threads. That is how easy he snapped ropes. Delilah then said to Samson, all this time you've been making a fool of me and lying to me. Tell me how you can be tired, he replied, if if you weave the seven braids of my head into the fabric on the loom and tighten it with a pin, I'll become as weak as any other man. Listen to this. If you give the devil an inch, you know what? You live to regret the miles it will take off of your life. Come on, somebody. I'm not preaching yet. I'm just reading through what happened, as clear as it is, but never convict his heart. Delilah then said to Samson, all this time you've been making fool of me, lying to me, tell me how you can be tired. 
he replied, if you give the seven bread of the head into the fabric on the loom and tighten it with a pin, I'll become as weak as any other man. So while he was sleeping, Delilah took the seven bread of his head, woven them into the fabric and tightened with a pin. Again, she called him, Samson, the Philistine upon you. He awoke on his sleep and pulled all the pin and loom with the fabric. Then she said to him, how can you say I love you? Wow. Wow, here comes the love word. You see how cunning the devil is? When he won't confide in me, this is the third time you have made a fool of me, baby. Wow, you can imagine the touch. You can imagine the look. You can imagine the stroke of the hair shut the gate. Tell me the secret of your great strength, honey. Woo! With certain nagging, she prodded him day after day until he was sick to dead of it. Wow. You talk about numb? You talk about numb? You see how sin can get into a life of a person. And I do pray in Jesus' name. May the Holy Spirit convict your heart. Young man, young girl watching me today. Hold on there, fasten your seatbelt. I got some good news for you. So he told her everything. Wow, told her everything. And the secret revealed to Delilah, no razor has ever been used on my head. He said, because I've been a Nazarite dedicated to God from my mother's womb. Hear this. If my head was shaved, my strength would ever leave me and I would become as weak as any other man. When Delilah saw that he had told her everything, she sent word to the rulers of the Philistines. Come back one more time. You think the devil is going to give up on you? Never. Never give up. If you never make a decision upon your life, make a choice today to make a turn for Christ. He'll keep on coming after you until your life is over. Come back one more. He has told me everything. So the rulers of the Philistine return with the silver in their hands. Can you imagine the reward is coming? After putting him to sleep on her lap. Look, on her lap. What those? I do not know. Don't ask me. But never mention. Must be all call, of course. She called for someone to save off the seven braids of his hair. And so began to subdue him, and his strength left him. Verse 20, then she called Samson the Philistines upon you. He awoke, awoke from his sleep and thought, I'll go out as before and shake myself free. But he did not know, listen to this, the Lord had left him. To conclude my reading today, then the Philistine sees him, gouged both of his eyes, took him down to Gaza, binding him with a bronze circle. They sent him to the grinding grains in prison. That is why I would like to entitle my sermon today, Defeating Delilah. The subject is Samson. The theme, how to overcome your enemy. Clear reading of his word, people. So clear, very straightforward. It is Samson's distinction to be the only judge whose entire biography from birth to death is reported in the scripture. You know, when I read through his birth, when I read through, the angel spoke to the mother and to the father. 
about uh, this young man. He's a type of Jesus. Just like uh, Mary giving birth to Jesus, the angel spoke to her. No difference. His father was Manoah. His mother was not recorded. The meaning of his name was little son or sonny boy. As the birth of the chosen leader was announced by the angel, Judge chapter 13, verse 3 to 5. The strict requirements of the pledges of the Nazarites were to be imposed upon both the mother and her expected son. As Samson enjoyed the special blessings of the Lord, he grew up in status, in the blessings of God upon his life. And the spirit of the Lord began to move mightily upon his life, conquering the enemy of the Israelites, the Philistine, in which he was chosen to be the judge of the nation. Acted mightily to defeat the enemy one by one. The question I would like to throw with you today, people, how a great man of God was overcome by his enemy? How can this happen? If you're writing down, and I would like to share with these few minutes that I have today, amen, this is my first point if you're writing down. Do not sleep with the enemy. Come on, somebody. If you're close to somebody, turn in to him or turn to her, tell him her, no sleeping with the enemy. Samson heroic act was no match when come to his immorality. He married a woman from the Philistine. Book of Judges 14 verses 1 and 2. He spent a night with a prostitute. The same chapter, chapter 16, Delilah later captivated his heart. Judges 16, 4. Even though he knew the Philistine were his enemies. He still opened the door to the enemy. He still gave access to the enemy. I do pray that the Lord will open the eyes of our heart to know the difference. This is my prayer, people. Be filled with the Holy Spirit to open your spiritual eyes. He compromised his faith and his character. I remember 1 King 18, 21 people, when Elijah confronted the Israelites. How long, how long will you waver between two opinions? People, you either love God or love the devil. You cannot sit on the fence. You either in or out. Coming to worship our God. Coming to be an instrument that God wants. There's no two way about it. It's only God and God alone. Come on, somebody. You can give a big shout of amen to that. Samson, who cannot have a foot in both camps. God is not a respect of any person. Shout an amen to that. It is my prayer today, people. Even though we are locked down, even though everything may be going against you, listen to me. Hold on to your faith. Let nothing move you, people. You cannot serve two masters. You are either in or out. No sitting on the fence. Stop playing with fire. Run away from Delilah. Don't sleep with your enemy. Guard your heart for the beauty. Guard your heart from the beauty of the world 
that is luring and tempting you. Come on, somebody. Am I talking to somebody in the house today? Guard your heart. For the devil knows your strength. For the devil knows your calling. For the devil knows uh, that he has already chosen you even before the beginning of time. You are peculiar, you are special. If you haven't heard from somebody here, from Pastor Kani today, amen. You are chosen generation, young people. Samson, are you listening to your mom and dad? When he first came and told mama, I'm in love with a Philistine woman. And Manoah, the mother's son, is there no woman in the house of Israel? Wow. Can I speak to young people today? Hear me and hear me well. Your parents are the representative of the most high God upon your life. With all that you have clothed with, knowledge. Mm. Muscle. With all your beauty, young girl. Sometimes you need to pay attention to your earthly parents. For they are God's voice to you. He never pay attention to his parents when they were telling him the right thing to do because he was set apart from the beginning. You ready for this? Hear this. This is the word of our Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 7 verse 6. Do not give dog what is sacred. Do not throw your pearl. Amen. To pigs. If you do, they may trample them and under, trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. You think the devil will have mercy on you? No. For the word of the Lord is clear, for he has come to kill and destroy. For Jesus and Jesus alone have come for you to have life and have life to the full. Can you say amen? Don't forget that. Do not allow your ministry, do not allow your ministry transformed others and not you. Why I say that is this. Sometimes that includes me as a pastor. Sometimes we got to happen because of the position, because of the promotion because of how the Lord has blessed and we forgot our humble beginning. Listen to me, in every walk of life, who you are today, not because of who you are and the blessings and the millions you have in the bank, somebody provide for you. If you believe that, say amen to that. The first step of overcoming the enemy is this. Declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. To make an utter and total commitment to him and don't waver in your decision. Can somebody shout amen to that? Never, never waver. Amen. Serve him wholeheartedly. For you always continue to be filled. You will never run out of God's supply. When Jesus is your shepherd, when Jesus is your keeper, when Jesus is your supplier, your resource always come from him. This is my second point I'd like to share with us today. Are we doing okay here? Thank you. This is my second point if you're writing. Don't forget who gives you your strength. Turn to your neighbor, tell him, uh, don't forget who give you your strength. Judge 13, 24, 25. 
the woman gave birth to a boy and named him Samson. He grew and the Lord blessed him. Verse 25, hear this. And the spirit of the Lord began to stir him while he was in Mahane Dan between Zorah and Esther. From the very humble beginning, the hand of the Lord was with him through. Wow. I do pray in Jesus' name, may the Lord open our eyes. It is not Samson hair. Amen. Not his hair. Not the heroic build he has made him strong. It was his obedience to the Lord. And the anointing of the Holy Spirit makes the difference. Amen. It is not how well you look. It is not how intelligent you are. It is not how powerful you are. It is not how well you speak. Listen to me. The anointing of the Spirit upon your life makes the difference. You've got nothing to be proud of because we are just earthly vessel. Come on, somebody. His long hair was a demonstration of his ongoing commit, commitment to the Lord, but not his power source. We're just earthly vessel used by God. Come on, somebody. Luke 24, verse 49. What does the Bible say? Terry, in Jerusalem, I'm going to send you what my father promised, but stay in the city until you've been clothed with the power from an eye. Come on, somebody. What can we do without the Spirit? What can we do, people, when the Spirit of the Lord is not with us? Listen to me. Continue on sinning will never take you anywhere. What a beautiful time if this is the Lord's will to lock us up and make a search within us. Maybe this is the prayer we should continually to pray. Father, I do not know what the future holds, but I can't afford to go without your Holy Spirit. You can shout amen to that. You would rather lose everything, people. But you can't afford to lose the anointing of the Spirit upon your life. You will be a mockery just like Samson. The Lord calls and he anoints his servant. The classic example is in 1 Samuel 16, 11, 13, and that is about uh, David. So he has Jesse out uh, there. Are these all your sons you have? They're still the youngest. The youngest. Jesse answered, he is standing the sheep. Samuel said, send to him. We will not sit down until he arrives. Hear these people. So he sent for him and had him brought in. He was gl glowing within health and had a fine appearance and handsome future. Then the Lord said, arise and anoint him, this is uh, the one uh, who should lead the Israelites. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, what did the Bible say? The spirit of the Lord was upon David. Hallelujah. Listen to me. It is not us. It is the spirit of God upon our life. Make us peculiar. Make us different. Make us an earthly vessel of honor for God somebody. Hallelujah. You won't find fault if your eyes on Jesus, he is our source, he is our strength, he is God with us people, he is the baptizer of the Holy Spirit, somebody. The true Christian ideal is not to be happy, the true Christian ideal is to be holy. Come on somebody, shout amen. Amen, turn to your neighbor, be holy, for he is holy. That is what will attract 
the anointing of the Spirit upon your life when holiness is with you. When you start to expose yourself just like Samson to the last of the world, guess what? You'll never leave the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will leave you. That is the truth. Because the sin and the Holy Spirit cannot work together. You either choose to have the Spirit of the Lord or choose to enjoy the blessings of Egypt. The true Christian ideal, people, is to be holy. We are not here to have a good time. We are here to glorify him, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. That is the purpose of your calling. That is the purpose of uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit upon your life. Why? It's not because of us. Not because of Mount Zion. Not because of everything that we do, people. No. We are here to glorify him. How can he be glorified with carnality? How can he be glorified with sins? No. He can only be glorified, people, when the people are chosen by God. Set them apart for the use of the Almighty God and the Spirit of God upon their lives. The ask, the task is never as great as the power behind us. Can you say amen to that? I repeat, the task is never too great like the power behind our wings. I think, Father, teach me, O oh Lord, today not be too familiar with the experience of the past. Teach me today, O oh Lord, to live one day at a time. I cannot depend on my infilling of last week. No, this is a new week. This is a new day. I cannot do anything without the fresh touch of his anointing. I confess that to you people today. Because what can I do without the power? You know what? Things become easy people because Zechariah says, it is not by might, it is not by power, it is by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Go and tell Zerubbabel, the hands that started the work will complete it. But the condition of completing the work, it's not on your strength, it's not on, not on your knowledge, not because of the numerous of people are watching me today. No, people, it is the power behind us. Can shout amen to that. Listen, church, it is not the jawbone or the smooth stone in the hands of David, not a jawbone. In the hands of Samson, it is not, not the serpent or the pole. In the hands of Moses, it is not the hem of the garment of our Lord Jesus Christ. It isn't the thing, but the Lord who is behind those who are using it. It isn't the objects we use, but the Lord who is ever present. Come on, somebody. Can we give a big clap offering to the Lord today, people? Amen. Don't forget who gives you the strength. We overcome the enemy because greater is he who is in us than who is out there in the world. We overcome because we put on the whole armor of God. So I praise these people. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. May this strength clothe you today to overcome any test will come your way. Listen to this. Romans 8 verse 8. The mind controlled by the spirit is life and peace. In Jesus name. Not only people, not only to be filled, no. Let your mind be controlled too. Let your body be filled for you are. 
the temple of the Holy Spirit. Third point, if you're ready, don't let sin dull your senses. Amen. Don't forget who gives you the strength. Do not sleep with your enemy. Third point, don't let sin dull your senses. Hear this, Judge 16, 20. Oh, may God help us. It really, really, really hurt me because he did not know when the spirit of the Lord left him. She called Samson, the Philistine upon you. Listen to this. He awoke from the sleep and thought, I'll go as he used to do before. Shake himself free. But guess what? The bottom line. But he did not know. The spirit of the Lord has left him. Wow. You ready for this? Let me, just allow me to demonstrate this to you. One time, still close. Second time, Holy Spirit start to move. Third time, fourth time. And you're sitting there by yourself, thinking, oh, I still can shake. Oh, I still can snap. Uh Uh-huh. Because it's not you. It is the power behind you that make you successful in everything you do. Come on, somebody. Take that with you. And I do pray. The saddest verse in the story of Samson is not when they shaved his ear, gouged out his eyes. I think this is the saddest part. When the Lord Almighty, who's been uh, his uh, sources all through the battle he won, left him. Sad. And I do pray, sin dulls our spiritual senses. What can you do without the spirit? For he convicts the world of sin. What can you do, people? That is the ministry of the spirit to us today to keep on telling you, uh uh-uh, oh, oh, stop. You know, when you're confined like this, I mentioned a few times I've been sharing through this lockdown period on our online service, I've been sharing. Listen to me, amen, so easy to do silly thing. And I do pray, amen, honor the spirit of the Lord who is there with you. He is there. He is your best. He is your advocate. He is your paraclete. He is your comforter. He is your teacher. He is your guide. He speaks and he knows. Can you shout amen? Sin, people, sin dulls our spiritual senses. What can you do without the spirit? You can get what you want, but you'll never like what you get. Seriously. If you want to do sin, you can get it. Enjoy the pleasure. But get ready for the consequence. Come on, somebody. Get ready. You think you'll run away with it? No way. You give sin an inch and you'll have to retake a mile. Three times, people, three times. Apart from married to the Philistine, apart from getting to the prostitute, apart from saying yes to Delilah. Three times, people, wow. First time, he should have, if the spirit of the Lord was there, should have waken up. Uh -uh. This lady, she's trying to pull my leg. This lady is trying to do something for me. I better get out from this one, yeah? But I do pray the Holy Spirit will continue to be with you, to convict you from the world of sin. You give sin an inch, remember that. The Holy Spirit will keep us to keep sin out of our lives. And that is what Romans 8, verse 16 says. That is the ministry. The Spirit himself testify with our spirit. That we are God's children people. You don't belong to the devil. You don't belong to the enemy. You belong to him. 
for the Spirit is testifying to us that we are the property of the Most High God. First Thessalonians 5, 19 says this, sin enough and you'll become dead to eat. This is my prayer, First Thessalonians 5, 19, don't quench the Spirit of the Most High God. Don't. I pray that the Spirit, amen, of the Lord will continue to ablaze upon your life, continue to shine, continue to be the great ambassador of the Most High God. Sin causes the cup of joy to spring a leak, saints, amen. You may be laughing, you may be enjoying. You ready for this? Guess what? It will drain your finance. It will drain your marriage. It will drain your family. It will drain even your life. Just like Samson people. I do pray in Jesus' name today. Amen. Make sure continue to be filled. People, the wage of sin is death. There is no minimum wage. If it is deadly, don't touch it. If it is dangerous, stop playing with it. Romans 6, 23, Ephesians 4, 30. Please don't grieve the Holy Spirit. I love Psalm 51, 11, people. Let this be our prayer. Lord, do not take away your spirit from me, O oh God. Amen. Don't cast your presence, Father. Let's learn our lesson, people, because our God alone can forgive, cleanse, renew, and restore right spirit within us. Can you shout amen? What a beautiful, beautiful message to convey to you. You ready for the final one? This is my final point today. Don't forget to call upon the name of the Lord. You ready for this? If you get in trouble. <clears throat> verse 22 <clears throat> and verse 26. Let me... Let me just read verse 28. Then Samson prayed, verse 28, of chapter 16 in the book of Judges, and he prayed, amen. Samson prayed to the Lord, sovereign Lord, remember me, please God, strengthen me just once more, and let me, with one blow, get revenge on this Philistine for the revenge of my two eyes. You know what? I love that we're serving a God of second chance. Come on, somebody. You can give a big clap offering to the Lord today. Amen. Jonah, what a lesson we can learn of how he restored. He prayed. Amen. To the Lord, his God, he said, in my distress, I call on the Lord. And he answered me from the deep in the realm of the dead. I call for help. And he listened to my cry. Moses said to God, who am I? I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelite out of Egypt. Running away from the people, Father. And yet the Lord give him a second chance. I'm still calling you out to be a deliverer to be a savior, to be the peer, uh, redeemer and deliverer of the Israelites. John Mark, I love when he reminds Timothy in 2 Timothy 4.11, amen. Paul wrote to Timothy, get Mark and bring him with you because he's helpful to the ministry. And Samson, one more time, he rubbed his hair. Oh, my hair is growing again. Guess what, Lord, one more time. You know what, I, when I want to close with this thought today. When I close and I was thinking of this, wow. Philistine, ladies and gentlemen, what a, what a joy to know that we have a trust bank, a trust bank that we can trust. In the time of pandemic, we're going through in the time of lack, in the time of tests so severe. 
I do not know what you're going through, family, as a family, as an individual. But I'm here to tell you, you have a God who can answer prayer. I was thinking, if the Lord can visit a man like Samson and give him the strength, one more time, I'm here to challenge any people that are listening to me in whatever attack you are, you are in today. When temptation lures, call on the name of the Lord. When depression lurks upon your life, call on the name of the Lord. When fear arises, speak on the name of the Lord. When the enemy whisper any more lies to you, listen to me. Declare the name of the Lord. When lack creeps in your door, rebuke in the name of the Lord. When the attack of the devil getting stronger, put on the full armor of God. Samson killed many people more than his lifetime in only one stroke when the Lord gave him the strength. The good news is Jesus was killed only one dead for the whole world to be saved. I'm here in Isaiah 1, 18 to conclude. Come now, let us settle this matter, says the Lord. If your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. Idolatry, adultery, homosexual, lesbians, Whatever case you're in today, my dear brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you, amen, our God still can answer prayer. It's never too late to turn to him and cry to him. In the serious case you're in, he can turn things around. Blessings, my prayer, to be upon each and every one of you in Jesus' name. Can we pray? Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Father, for the wind beneath our wings. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, Father. Who we are today is because of you. Come and feel us afresh, O oh God. Going through this hard time, O oh God, our eyes are fixed on you, Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Somebody are tuning in today, Father, that needs the strength I'm talking about today. You're the Lord of second chance. Minister to him, minister to her. Restore that life right here, right now. Glorify thyself, Father, one more time. In that broken life today, in Jesus' name, we give you honor and we give you praise. Jesus' mighty, wonderful name, we agree and pray. Can we shout amen? Amen. I'll give you an opportunity to extend this invitation to you in Jesus' name. Worship Him.
before we finish our online service this morning, I would just like to extend an invitation call to every single one tuning in today. Our church members or our friends outside that are tuning in today with us. The good news is the God we serve just like what he did to Samson is a God of second chance. He can restore your life. He can give you the strength that you need today. Maybe you're going through some hardship that has turned you away. Maybe you're in what I've mentioned, I categorize that I mentioned to you today. The Lord is here. He can answer to your prayer. If you determine from your heart, Lord, I need you more than anything else. If that is you, amen, wherever you're tuning in, just raise your hand. Amen. The Lord who sees, he knows, and he can minister to you wherever you are right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, saints. Repeat this prayer after me today. Dear Lord, I surrender my life to you. I'm sorry for my past. Thank you for your acceptance. Thank you for your forgiveness. I surrender my all into your capable hand. Mold me and make me to be the person you want me to be. My life, oh God, if it can be used to be vessel of honor for you, use my life in Jesus' name. I thank you for your word. I keep your word in my life not to sin against you. I worship you. I praise you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Father, we return to you the glory that is rightly yours. Thank you for your touch and thank you, Father, for ministering to your chosen people today. Thank you for the renewing of your spirit. Thank you for the restored life. We return to you the praise that is rightly yours, Father, for one single soul turning back to you. Whole heaven rejoice. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity to be co-workers with you in these last days. In Jesus' mighty, wonderful name, we agree and pray. Amen. May God richly bless you all. Thank you for tuning in today. God bless you. today to our church members you can transfer your tithes and offerings through the option of our streaming or you can make a direct transfer to our church account please contact your district leaders and your pastors for more information until next time have a blessed week